Here we're going to look at a Leaving Cert Higher Level Applied Maths question. And the question we're going to look at is question 10a, which came up in 2009. Now here we're asked to solve the differential equation dy dx equals 1 all over xy plus y all over x. And we were given the boundary conditions y equals root 3 when x is 1. So with these boundary conditions, we can find an exact solution to this first order differential equation. So the method we're going to use is the method of separation of variables. So we're going to try and get all the y variables on the left and x variables only on the right. So the first thing we need to do is on the right hand side we need to get a common denominator between these two terms and the common denominator would be xy and we'd get then 1 plus y squared all over xy. So our differential equation then tells us that dy dx equals so we've got a 1 plus y squared on top on the right, and we've got an xy in the bottom. So we're going to bring this dx across and multiply, and the 1 plus y squared will bring that across and divide. And the only term we're left with on the right-hand side that we need to remove is this y, which is dividing, and if we bring that across, we can multiply. So we've now got the integral of y dy all over 1 plus y squared equals the integral of dx all over x. Now, on the left hand side we've got a quotient, we've got a y all over 1 plus y squared. Now you notice that if we do differentiate at the bottom, if we differentiate 1 plus y squared with respect to y, you do get 2y, which is just a constant multiple of the top. So a u substitution will work here. So if we do let u equals 1 plus y squared, and if we differentiate both sides, the u will then equal 2y dy. And if we bring that 2 across, we can divide by 2, which is the same as multiplying by a half. So we've now got a half times the u equals y dy. So this means that on the top where we had a y dy, we can just replace that with a half the u. On the bottom, where we had this 1 plus y squared, we can then replace that with u. So our equation then becomes a half times the integral of du all over u, and this just equals the integral of dx all over x. Now, if we do integrate the u over u, that just gives us an airline of u. And similarly, if we integrate dx over x, that just gives us an ln of x. So we've then got a half times the ln of u equals the ln of x plus c. We're going to get a constant of integration on the right. Now u is something we introduced, and u just equals 1 plus y squared. So we're just going to get a half times the ln of 1 plus y squared, and this equals the ln of x plus c. Now to find out what this constant of integration is, we're going to apply our boundary conditions. Again, our boundary conditions were given at the start as y equals root 3, and this occurs when x equals 1. So if we substitute these values into the equation above, you get a half times the ln of 1 plus 3 equals the ln of 1 plus c. However, the natural log of 1 is just 0, which means that c then is a half times the ln of 4, which is the same as the ln of 4 to the power of a half, which is just ln of 2. So if we substitute this value back into here, our equation then becomes a half times the ln of 1 plus y squared equals the ln of x plus the ln of 2. Now on the right hand side, we're adding two logs, so we can just use the log law, and this will give us the ln of x times 2, which is the ln of 2x. So we've now got a half times the ln of 1 plus y squared equals the ln of 2x. If we then multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of fractions, we've then got the ln of 1 plus y squared equals 2 times the ln of x. And again, if you've got a multiple in front of an ln, you can bring it up and write it as a power. So we can then write that as the ln of 1 plus y squared equals the ln of 2x all to be squared. And now to get rid of an ln, we have to get the exponential of both sides. So it means that 
we can write this then as e to the ln of 1 plus y squared equals e to the ln of 4x squared. But the natural log and the exponential functions are inverse functions of each other, so they'll just cancel out. So we then just be left with 1 plus y squared equals 4x squared. And if you bring this one across, subtract, and then get the square root of both sides, we're just going to be left with the function y equals the square root of 4x squared minus 1.